Hello Craft Warehouse followers. Today we are playing with some macrame and we are going to be creating a geometric um, kind of design off this brass ring. Now I'm using about an eight inch brass ring, but you can use anything bigger or smaller that you want to. You just would have to alter the design. I'm also using this black and this um, natural colored cording. Now you could do these with other colors. These are dyeable um, cords, so you could easily take this with some of the fabric dye and dye it to whichever color you'd like to have in your project. So let's go ahead and get started. I did already pre-cut my cording, so um, let's bring in my natural. I have about 20 pieces cut here, and they are roughly about 24 inches. It's much more than I'm needing, but um, with the knots, I'm, and I'm also not quite sure how long I want my ends to be. I'd rather be on the safe side than be sorry. So let's get started. So first off, I like to make sure I get this nice and centered. And I'm gonna start with it right underneath. And we're gonna be doing a cow hitch. So I'm gonna start with it underneath. I'm just gonna flip it right on over. And then I'm gonna flip it on the other side of um, the cording and bring it right through the loop and pull tight. So it's gonna get my cord nice and secure and then I'll do the other side. So I'm gonna wrap the cording around and then what I'm gonna do is bring it to the other side and then I'm gonna pull it through the hole. And then I'm just gonna pull it nice and tight. Okay, and then we're just gonna continue with all of them. I like to start with my cording underneath the hoop, but that is just a preference. So I bring that cord up, and then I'm gonna bring it on the bottom side. I basically wanna have this guy in the center and then pull it nice and tight. So I could go this way with it. And all I'd wanna do is make sure I'm going on the other side. Um, only thing I would suggest is if you have one pattern, like I've been going on the top side at first, and then I come over and go to the bottom side and through the hoop, I would keep your knots consistent. Um, just cause you can kind of tell if you switch up your directions and I want this to look as um, in unison as possible. And that's really all we're gonna be doing on this um, piece today, you guys, is we're gonna be doing cow hitches. So nothing fancy, you're not gonna have to know multiple um, knots. We're just gonna be doing that one knot See, that knot looked different. I knew something was wrong. I didn't start with my cord underneath. So cord underneath. And pull tight. So I have the cord going up and over, and then I'm gonna have it cross, and I'm gonna pull it underneath and through the hoop, or the loop. All right, so I am gonna go ahead and I'm gonna finish the rest of these and I'll be right. Okay, you guys, I have fully tied on the natural color. Um, and I did wanna point out, I did take away one strand because um, I wanted to have an odd number for this pattern. So there are, are only 19 strands. So I'm gonna count nine strands this way and nine strands to find that center. Let's count nine in. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And this should be the center. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so I am gonna go ahead and I am gonna tuck this black strand right behind and weave it right over the middle strand. And I'm gonna go ahead and center that. And then I'm just going to continue. So instead of one this time, it's going to go over three. I'm basically adding a cord on each side 
each time. I'm, and I'm not gonna tie these until I got my first pattern all weaved through, and then I'll go ahead and start tying them. Once you kind of get a little bit further out, it's much easier to kind of shove your cording through the top side. Go ahead and do that if you feel comfortable. Okay. It's okay that these are loose and not right side by side because as we go along, we'll go ahead and tighten them and get them closer together. But just kind of, again, setting our pattern so that we're not having to try to weave while we are tying everything off. So if we make a mistake, it's easier to backtrack. And I am going to be going all the way out to that last strand. Okay, almost there. And one last one. I believe. See, this is where I'm off a little bit. So I skipped, I must have missed something up. So I go over one, I go, oh, right here. This is why I like to kind of lay my pattern out first because I actually did not get the right cording. So I'm not gonna be even because I had only one more to do here and two more on this side. So it was my dead giveaway that I messed something up on this top part. Okay. Okay, you guys, and one last strand. So right through that last one. So we're just gonna go ahead and shuffle these down towards each other. Shuffle, shuffle, and you'll kind of get to see the pattern a little bit here. So we're kind of making a little triangle. So before we get started, I'm just gonna go ahead and make sure I put all my cording below my hoop because that's how we did these ties and I want them to all look the same. So. We're gonna take that first cord, we're gonna loop it around the hoop, and then we're gonna go ahead and bring it right on through. I might have to adjust it a little bit, but I'm gonna go ahead and get this guy started down here. Oops. So again, making it tight along the hoop, and then Pulling it through the loop. Nice and tight. Okay, so now we're gonna go to that next one. We're gonna shuffle, oops. We're gonna go ahead and shuffle it down. And I'm gonna go ahead and start the knots. So making it tight, then going up, and through. And then I've kind of, before I pull it tight, I like to pull it all the way down next to the next knot, and then pull as tight as I can. Okay. So now we're gonna go ahead and do this guy down here. Again, same knots, keeping it, I'm tying them all the same way, same direction, because I am I want them to all have an even look to them. I don't want any knots looking different. 
want them all coming up and through the same direction. Now we're gonna shuffle this one over. So we loop it around the hoop. We go up and over and come right back through that loop that we created by going up and over. And pull it tight. So I looped her in the hoop. We're gonna go up and over and through. And pulling it nice and tight. Something, this one looks different from the others. So I'm gonna go ahead and untie this. I don't know if you guys can tell how that looks slightly different. That's why I try to keep my knots all consistent and the same, because I don't want anything funky happening. Oh, it's because it went over. So I want to take this under the hoop. See how something as simple as having it go over the hoop and do your knot versus under? Your knots onto the hoop are going to look completely different. And we're gonna bring them on down. Make sure it's nice and tight. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull our next row up and we're just gonna keep tying our same old knots. On the way I'm tying my knots, I want my cord to be on the upper side before I go through the whole, the loop. around the brass hoop and loop it on over making sure I'm trying to get all my cords as tight as I can okay then we're gonna go ahead and come in with that next cord So looping on the upper side of the hoop and then making the loop on the bottom half and pulling the cord through. I love that when you, when you just get a couple rows out, you can start to see your pattern form. It's really fun. So probably the most important thing is one, keeping your knots the same direction, um, making sure you're cording on your pattern. Sometimes they kind of, your cords get slipped under each other, just making sure you're pulling the right one over. Um, and then of course, um, it's just gonna be time consuming because you are having to tie knots for each in each string. So be patient. Um, it's actually, I think these are really fun to do when like watching a show um, or like on a nice rainy day, you don't want to be outside. It's just kind of very soothing to create one of these guys. Okay. And again, I'm trying to make these as tight as I can. If I catch that it's loose, I'll just kind of loosen the knot a little bit. And then I'll pull it as tight as I can and tighten the knot. Okay, we're almost there. And then we're gonna start our next layer of patterns. And then I'm probably gonna go ahead and fast forward all the knot tying so you guys don't have to sit through it. Once And then also, once you get the knot down, it is so easy just to, it's so easy to do the knot. You just have to practice a few times 
and then you'll fly through all your projects. Okay, and then after this, all I have is one more. Okay, last one for this pattern. And tying it off. So you're going to want to go ahead and make sure you're getting these as tight as they can. So I do just kind of push them up. Um, I'd like to tighten mine after the fact that I've got them all on. Um, but you could be doing that as you go along, just making your strings are butt butted right up against each other and pulling tight. But, um, I just don't think I ever do it to my liking when I am first tying them on. Um, so I always like to kind of push them back up and retie them as tight as I can. And then you get that much stronger pattern. You almost feel like you're gonna start to overlap your strings a little, um, and don't worry about it at all. You're not going to, they're just gonna be pressed as close and hugging each other as possible. And so I kind of push it and pull it tight. Okay. I like the way that looks. So now we're gonna come in with our second part of this pattern. And it's all on one side. So we're gonna finish one side and then I'll kind of fast forward me going through this one. Okay, so now for our second part of the pattern, we are basically gonna do the opposite because I want this to be white through here. So instead of going through, instead of just covering this one center strand, I actually just want to go underneath it. So we're going to go underneath that one and then come up. So now we're going to go under the three strands. So adding one to the top and one to the bottom. And then just continuing that. So I'm going to go under and under. So that should be five strands that I'm under. Now I'm going to go under seven strands. Now I'm going under nine. And I could have easily done this in a different color as well. I just really wanted to stick to that um, very neutral tones. Okay, so I'm gonna go all the way over here. Then I'm gonna add one more. Looks like we just need a couple more strands. All right, and last one. And now we'll start tightening it. Now remember, all of my strings are on top here. So I wanna make sure I'm putting them all on the bottom side. Cause that's how we've been tying all of our other ones. 
And then I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I get this butted up as close as I can. I can always come back through and retighten. Um, I usually do just because I don't think I get as tight of a pattern as I usually like on the first run. And you just go over, on, you wanna go around the hoop on the top side and then you wanna make a loop on the bottom side of that middle string. Pull it tight. Do the same thing up here. See, so I got quite a bit of loose string there, so I'm just going to tighten this the best I can. Okay. And then just keep shuffling all your strings down and tying your knots until your pattern is complete. And I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna kind of fast forward through this um, to get to that final strand so you guys don't have to watch me tying all these knots again. And again, you're just doing those cow hitches. Same one you've done for the rest of the project. Okay, you guys, we are done with that second part of our pattern. And look how fun that is. Um, now, if I was to do this with a different color, it would show this part as a color um, versus like this square. But I really like this strong um, like chevron look here. So it just really depends on the look you're going for. And now we're just gonna go ahead and complete it on the other side. Now I was watching as I was going along and I was making sure that my strings were as tight as can be um, and butted up against each other. But you can also do that at the end like I showed you originally.
Okay, you guys, I am done. As you can see, I have a lot of extra ends. I probably could have only done about um, 18 inches and had enough hoarding. Um, I am somebody though, however, I will take the scraps and make small keychains out of. So it's whatever your preference is. Also, again, just depends on the size of your hoop. Now to really get these evenly trimmed, what I like to do is I like to grab some masking tape or painter's tape and I like to just come in here and put the tape side by side. I want it a little bit thicker. So I'm gonna go ahead and overlap and get to the, the length I want. And then all I do is trim right along that line. And I'm gonna do that all the way around. Then you just remove it and move it to your next section. Okay, so just trim it. And just moving the tape as I go along. I wanna make sure my cords are out nice and straight. And things might not be quite exact, but this is gonna get you pretty dang close to everything being the same length. And I only do a small piece because if I was just to keep wrapping this around, things could be a little bit uneven. So by going section by section, you're gonna keep it a little bit more consistent on length. And you want to make sure you're not if you're keep if you're putting it right along the edge, keep your tape right along the edge the best you can. And just keep going around. And we'll go to our next section. And then I got just a couple more sections to cut and then I'm going to show you what you can do. You can either leave it just like it is or we can end up fraying the ends of our cords. And our final section here.
Okay, so now I have it fully cut and trimmed. I mean, just look how fun and cute that is. Now I can just kind of undo these to kind of give them that frayed look by hand. Or you can come in with a comb and look how much easier that just kind of pulls everything apart. I definitely suggest something that has some finer um, teeth on it and just plug and chug away at fraying those ends. And it kind of fluffs them out versus doing them by hand, which is really nice. And you'll just go all the way around on these. If you're having a difficulty with any of them, I just go from the bottom with the tip of my comb and go on up. You'll wanna start from the bottom and kind of brush your way up to begin with, but it, sometimes you just have ones that don't want to fully come unraveled for you. And here, after I get them brushed out, I will go ahead and kind of trim them up a little. Because some of those strings end up being a little bit longer once they're untangled than when we cut them, so. I know some people wait to trim at the moment of after brushing them out, but I personally think that some of the strings come out a little bit further. Um, so I like to trim and then brush and then come back in and kind of trim things up. Okay, you guys, it's all brushed out, trimmed up, looking good. How fun is this? I can't wait to hang this up on my wall, you guys. Um, and again, thank you so much for joining me and happy crafting. Mm -hmm.